Data that has been sampled from a normal or Gaussian distribution is one of the main assumptions of parametric statistical tests, such as t-tests and ANOVAs. But how exactly can you decide whether data has been sampled from a normal distribution? In this video, I'll give you an overview of the main ways that are used to determine normality of data. So there are two main ways that are commonly used to deduce whether data has been sampled from a normal distribution. The first is the analysis of graphs, such as QQ plots and frequency distributions. The other is what are known as normality tests, and these include the D'Agostino Pearson Omnibus test, the Shapiro-Wilk test, and the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. But before we go into the tests, Let's ask ourselves why we do normality tests in the first place. Let's say we have a population of 100 people, and we are interested in the height of these people. So, these 100 people make up our population. We can measure their height and present the data in a frequency distribution. I will discuss frequency distributions in more detail shortly. The message here is that the population height data is approximately normally distributed and I'll explain how I know this shortly. The issue is that we rarely have access to the population data, so there is usually no way of knowing this is the case. But what people often have access to is a sample. Let's say we randomly selected 10 people from the population. This group right here is our sample. And again, we can measure their height and plot this using a frequency distribution. Now, when we talk about testing for normality, what we are doing is asking has the data been sampled, i.e. the sample data, from a distribution, the population data, that is close to the normal or Gaussian distribution? Let's quickly recap what a normal ideal looks like. When plotted on a frequency distribution, the normal distribution can be seen as a bell-shaped curve with the majority of observations being around the mean value, which can be seen as the center of the curve. So, has our sample come from a population that is approximately normal? Well, to answer this, we test the data for normality. Now, let's briefly go over the first approach to testing data for normality, and that is the analysis of graphs. Visualizing the data and graphs, such as frequency distributions, QQ plots, and box and whisker plots, are a powerful means of assessing the distribution of the data and should not be overseen. As shown, we can easily plot data on a frequency distribution. Let's expand on our previous example of height, but this time there are height data from a thousand people. Here, the measure of interest height is categorized into what are known as bins on the x-axis. The y-axis represents the relative frequency. So the number of times each observation is seen in the data set is counted and the frequency is plotted. For example, this bin contains all of the people that have a height between 64 and 66 inches. As mentioned, what you're looking for here is that the data is a nice bell-shaped curve. If so, the data is most likely sampled from a normal distribution. This is quite easily observed for large data sets. However, this can be tricky to assess when the sample size is much smaller. For example, if we randomly sampled the population data that contained 1,000 people and selected 10 values and plotted a frequency distribution, it's very hard to tell whether this data has been sampled from a normal distribution. If we increase the samples to 20 values, this becomes a little easier. And again, 50 samples, 100 samples, and 500 samples. Note, all of these samples have been sampled from a normal distribution, but the characteristics of the normal ideal, such as the bell-shaped curve, is often hard to see in smaller samples. Another means of graphically assessing the data for normality is what is known as QQ plots. The QQ plot is an abbreviation for quantile quantile plot. There is more to a QQ plot that goes beyond this video, but briefly, the x-axis plots the actual sample data. 
whereas the y-axis plots the predicted values, assuming the data was sampled from a normal distribution. Usually there is a solid line that runs diagonally on the graph. And in an ideal normal distribution, the values for the x and y-axis will be equal, and so the observations will sit on the solid line. This is what you should look for in a QQ plot, that the observations are on or around the line with little deviation. But again, this is so rarely seen. So let's take a look at this example. Notice that there are deviations at either end of the plot. This is a telltale sign that the data are skewed. And here is the frequency distribution of that same data. Taken together, we can see that this data does not represent a normal distribution. Let's now move on to normality tests. Just like there are statistical tests for hypothesis testing to determine whether there are any significant differences between two group means, such as the t-test, there are also statistical tests to determine whether a data set deviates from the expectations of a normal distribution. Common examples of such normality tests are the D'Agostino Pearson Omnibus, the Shapiro Wilk, and the Kolmogorov Smirnov tests. It's important to note that each normality test works slightly differently and so will produce different results when using the same data set. And since these tests report p values, there is a null and alternative hypothesis behind it. Specifically, the null hypothesis is where the values are sampled from a population that follows a normal or Gaussian distribution. The alternative hypothesis is when the values are not sampled from a population that follows a normal or Gaussian distribution. So, how do you interpret a p-value from a normality test? Commonly, an alpha level of 0.05 is applied to statistical hypothesis testing. So, if the p-value from the normality test is greater than 0.05, then we can accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis. Therefore, the sample data is not inconsistent with a normal distribution. If the p-value from the normality test is less than or equal to 0.05, then we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Therefore, the sample data is not sampled from a normal distribution. Let's take a look at an example of each. Firstly, I performed a D'Agostino Pearson normality test for this data set, and here is the frequency distribution. The p-value for the test was 0.087. So, which hypothesis test do we accept and which do we reject? The answer is that we accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis. So, the normality test suggests that the data are sampled from a population that follows a normal distribution. Let's take a look at a second example. Again, here is the frequency distribution. The p-value from the normality test in this case was 0.016. So, because the p-value is less than 0.05, we accept the alternative hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis. This suggests that the data are not sampled from a population that follows a normal distribution. An important note about normality tests is that the sample size can have a huge influence on these tests. With small sample sizes, normality tests have little power to reject the null hypothesis. And with large sample sizes, normality tests have too much power Therefore, they can detect even minor deviations from the ideal normal distribution. So, testing data for normality should not be restricted to one approach. In other words, do not perform normality tests and use the resulting p-value as a simple yes or no approach to decide if your data were sampled from a normal distribution. I recommend you perform a single normality test, don't perform multiple tests. As well as this, it's important to also inspect the QQ plot and frequency distribution of the data. Graphical analyses are more informative than any p-value returned from a normality test. Then, by taking into account all of your findings, use your own judgement to determine if your data was sampled from a normal distribution. Did you like this video? Be sure to give it a like or leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified when a new video is added.